The time was roughly 5 p.m. in the afternoon. It was the month of August and I was on my way to the amusement park. The fair was only open for a short duration during the summertime, so I made sure to go as often as I could before the school year began. My parents were pretty lenient growing up. I didn't really have a curfew, so that gave me the flexibility of staying out as long as I wanted, despite only being a teenager. The distance from my condo to the fair was about a 10-15 to 15 minute walk, so commuting there was always a convenience compared to taking public transit like the hordes of people I saw entering the park. When I arrived at the entrance, I made sure to pay my fare and get a wristband that would enable me to go on rides for an unlimited amount of time. I remember seeing the usual stuff, roller coaster rides, food stands, a ferris wheel, that kind of thing. To be honest, going to this specific fair could make anyone feel extremely claustrophobic, as the overbearing amount of people in the lineups for food, rides, or game attractions really made it difficult for anyone to get anywhere. I remember shoulder bumping at least several different guests before finally making it to the roller coaster ride I initially wanted to go on. The lineup for this particular ride was surprisingly not that long, so I immediately joined it behind this one girl standing in front of me. I politely tapped the girl on the shoulder and asked, Excuse me, have you been waiting in line for long? The girl turns around and says, Not that long. You come here alone? Uh, yeah, how about you? Well, I guess I'm not alone anymore. <laughs> yeah. I nervously chuckle as the girl says, I'm actually here with my boyfriend. And then looks at me as if she was looking through me, not at me. So, where is he? She then says, I'm looking at him. As the gates to the roller coaster ride began opening. Can the next 10 guests please see each car for more than 10 people, please? Guests from the lineup began rushing in and filling every card on a first come, first surf basis while the girl says, What are you waiting for, babe? Let's go! I began following behind her as we both proceeded to make our way inside one of the carts. I didn't see the harm in sitting next to her as I honestly found her pretty charming. Everyone, please fasten your seatbelts. We're about to take off very shortly. Hey, I'm Rob. What's your name? My name is Melissa, but you can call me Melly. Well, it's nice to meet you, Melly. The girl then leans over and kisses me on the cheek as I said, <laughs> Are you always this forward? <clears throat> That's when the roller coaster abruptly accelerates. I began to hold on for dear life as the velocity of the ride felt like I was jetting on the highway at a rate of 200 miles an hour. As the roller coaster began zooming up and down in a ferocious manner, I could see Melissa staring directly at me through my peripheral vision. I casually glanced at her, only to realize she was giving me the same bizarre stare she gave me during our initial encounter. At first, I thought she was just thrilled at the notion that my face looked silly from the turbulence of the ride, but then I realized that she was staring at me with a gaunt smile, like the movement from the ride didn't phase her in the slightest. I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. As we began approaching the tail end of the ride, I nonchalantly look around as if I was exploring the amusement park, but in reality, I was avoiding Melissa. The ride finally made its way back to the initial start point. I remember waiting for the operator's cue to unbuckle our seatbelts and safely get off the roller coaster. I made sure not to make eye contact with Melissa as the operator finally gave the green light for guest to exit the ride. Would all guests please exit on the side of the next guest? All guests please exit on the side of the next guest. That's when I got off and began speed walking while trying to find a fair game or another ride to go on. I then made my way into the huge ferris wheel lineup hoping to masquerade myself within the crowd. A small and soft hand began to firmly grasp onto the gaps in my fingers. I look across my shoulder and lo and behold, it was Melissa, holding hands with me as if we were in a relationship or something. Hey! It's me again! Uh, hey, getting a bit too comfy, aren't you? Yes, I'm very comfortable with my boyfriend, duh. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Melissa then hugs me and caresses her head against my shoulder. I honestly could have shoved her away, but decided to take the high road and go along with the whole facade. Time began running slow as we steadily began inching towards the entrance of the ferris wheel. I couldn't help but think in my head, 
the hell is this girl's problem? Why is she holding onto my arm like that? Does she really think I'm her boyfriend? After about 30 minutes of awkward silence and continuous unwanted arm hugging, we finally make it in front of the ride and began making our way onto one of the passenger cars. Again, we both sit next to each other. Melissa then wraps her arm around mine. I was now convinced that she had built a relationship which was obviously a figment of her imagination. The wheel then began to rotate as Melissa leans her head on my shoulder and says, Rob, can I tell you a secret? Uh, sure, Melly. Hey, can you please stop? I think you're moving a bit too fast here. But it's your fault! What the hell are you talking about? I have an impulsive behavior disorder. You're kidding me. Every time someone calls me by my nickname, I develop an extreme compulsion, where I can't resist the urge to kiss them. Melissa's eyes then wander towards the sky, as if she was embarrassed to disclose such personal information. But then, why did you introduce me to that name? That's when Melissa's phone begins to ring. She pulls it out and reveals a video call coming from her mother. She then answers the video call and says, Hey mom. Hello my precious baby pumpkin. How is the amusement park treating you? Mom, the view is quite amazing. Here, say hi to my boyfriend Rob. Ooh, isn't he a handsome son of a gun? At this point, I was extremely aggravated by Melissa's antics, despite her having this so-called disorder. I didn't want to make the situation any more awkward than it already was, so I just went along with it and entertained the idea that we were a couple. Melissa's great. <laughs> you guys make for a perfect couple. So, you gonna propose or what? Uh... What are you waiting for, big guy? Pop the question! Can we please stop this, Melly? I mean, Melissa? I then realized that the Ferris wheel had finally come to a halting stop. As the operator gave us the green light to abort the Ferris wheel, I used the opportunity to get the hell out of there and speed walk as far away from Melissa and her psychotic mother as possible. Hey, where did my son-in-law go? Rob, where are you going? I want to ride the Ferris wheel again so you can propose! Leave me the hell alone or I'm calling the cops! I then turned around and glanced at the Ferris wheel from a distance. I could see Melissa still sitting in the passenger car as the Ferris wheel again began to operate. A feeling of relief flowed through my body. Getting away from that clingy psycho brought me immense satisfaction. I made direct eye contact with her from where I was standing at. What made this all the more disturbing was how emotional I saw her getting. I saw tears profusely run down her face. At this point, I could have bolted the scene and left the fair, but I honestly felt a little guilty. Knowing that I was the sole purpose of Melissa crying a storm on the Ferris wheel made me gravitate towards staying and possibly giving an explanation as opposed to splitting the scene. The Ferris wheel then abruptly stops as the ride finally came to an end. I saw Melissa at the very top passenger car as the guests below began to exit the ride. She then began shouting, You're the worst boyfriend ever! I hate you! I wish I never met you! Without thinking, I said, I'm not your boyfriend, Melly! That's when Melissa compulsively leans over the passenger car to kiss me. No. No. I was in my bed sound asleep when I got awoken from the light shining through the gaps of my blinds. I got up and pulled the blinds open as I began basking in the view that the 20th floor from my condo had to offer. The view was magnificent. I could literally see the entire landscape of my city through my windows. Down by the glistening lake was a fair right next to it. Seeing the Ferris wheel and roller coasters from a distance boosted my serotonin levels from excited to exhilarated. My anticipation was at an all-time high. What better thing to do other than hit up my local amusement park on a Saturday morning, I thought to myself. 
My first instinct was to obviously invite my girlfriend to tag along, so I rang her number with my cell phone as I heard her soft, mellow tones say, Hey, babe. Like she had just awoken herself. Hey, what are you up to today? Nothing much, just studying. The usual. What's up? Did you want to go to the amusement park later? I can't. I have an exam on Monday, babe. Did you forget about my summer classes? Oh, yeah, that's right. No worries, I'll just give Simon a call. Okay, make sure you take lots of pictures. Will do. Good luck studying. I then call my friend Simon, and within a matter of seconds into the conversation, he was already up for the idea. I head to my washroom and begin to do my basic hygiene practices, just before changing into some outdoor clothes to go outside. About an hour later, I caught an Uber and began making my way to the amusement park. I made sure to text my friend that I was on my way, as he replies back saying that he was already there. According to the Uber app, my arrival was going to take approximately 10 minutes or so. I wasn't going to keep my friend waiting for too long, as I could see the huge roller coaster rides and attractions appear closer the more we drove into the park's proximities. I felt like I was a kid all over again. All the nostalgic memories as a child began hitting me all at once, the more I reminisced while staring at my reflection in the passenger seat window. We finally arrive as I could see my friend Simon waiting by the entrance where the lines were. I got out of the Uber and began approaching his direction, as we both bought a wristband each and then started heading inside where all the carnival games were. Throughout the duration of the day, I would say that we both approximately spent close to $400 in total on carnival games, only to come out empty-handed. Well, not exactly empty-handed. Simon was able to win a small plushie, but ended up giving it to some kid, as we were a little irritated from the amount of L's we were taking. The park was about to close in an hour or so, when I spotted an odd-looking machine from the corner of my eye. It looked like a clown animatronic inside of a wooden box. I then said to my friend, Dude, look at that game over there. What the hell is that thing? We both began approaching closer to the machine, as the words on the box were now legible enough to read. The game was called Psychic Clown. There was a bold print on the front of the box that read, One dollar per try. Two slots indicated that the game accepted both coins or bills. I was a little intrigued by the game, until the old man standing by the hot dog stand said, Hey, what are you kids doing? This game is out of order. Uh, we just wanted to try Get it out. Get away, kid. The game is cursed. I've seen too many stupid kids like you lose your lives. What are you talking about? You'll lose everything. You hear me? Don't say I didn't warn you, idiots. The man then walks away as me and Simon immediately scrabble through our pockets, looking for any change that we could find. The behavior from that man left us curious, but at the same time intrigued about what he was heckling about. What the hell was his problem? I don't know. To be honest, I don't think I want to spend any more money today, dude. I already lost about 200 bucks. I have like five bucks left. What do you think we should ask it? I don't know how this thing works, dude. Let's see if it even accepts the money. I then placed a one dollar bill in the slot as Simon impatiently presses the go button. As I looked up at the glass, I could see the clown open its eyes wide and say, Ask me a yes or no question to uncover the truth and then press the go button. Simon then jokingly asks, Psychic clown, is Dean ugly? And then follows up by pressing the go button. The clown then bizarrely starts to move back and forth while simultaneously laughing in a psychotic fashion and then says the word. Yes. (laughs) Uh-huh, okay. Very funny, dude. I then slipped another dollar in and rebuttal Simon's antics by saying, Psychic clown, is Simon going to be a virgin till he's 40? The clown once more begins to move back and forth while the strange laugh echoes through the mouth of the animatronic, saying, Yes. Okay, okay, dude. Enough with the jokes. Let's ask it more serious questions. 
I then take out another dollar and slip it into the slot while asking the clown, Psychic clown, do I have a girlfriend? Again, the clown begins to laugh and then says the word. No. Well, that's a bummer. The clown is wrong. Let me ask this question that I know it can't possibly get wrong. I then slipped another dollar in as Simon asks, Psychic clown, is the color of my shirt white? As the clown began to operate, I knew that if it answered this particular question wrong, then this was obviously just another lame gimmick that the fair used to finesse its customers. The clown then said the word, no. Yep, definitely not legit. Well, I do have one more dollar left. Dude, I'm gonna catch the bus. Screw this clown. All right, dude, I'll meet you at the front. Simon then begins walking towards the entrance of the park while I slip my last dollar in the slot and ask it, Psychic clown, is the color of Simon's shirt red? Again, the clown begins its psychotic laugh and then says the word, yes. At this point, I was 100% convinced that this whole clown machine was a scam and that the gentleman from the hot dog stand was trying to frighten us. I began to approach the entrance of the amusement park as the shutdown of the carnival games indicated that the fair was just about to wrap up. I then saw a large crowd that seemed to be rattled by some sort of commotion going on. It sounded like the majority of people were in a frantic state as I could hear someone in the crowd yelling, Help! Someone call the cops! As I noisily approached the group of pedestrians, I could see my friend Simon laying face first in a puddle of blood. <gasps> I then began to frantically perform CPR by pressing on his chest as the blood from his shirt began to seep onto my hands while yelling. No, Simon, wake up. Simon, please don't die on me. Please, Simon. As the ambulance rushes Simon to the hospital, I could virtually see no movement or any vital signs of human life. Simon was immediately pronounced dead at the scene due to multiple stab wounds in his chest from an alleged assailant that fled the scene while supposedly trying to mug him at the bus stop of the fair. About a month after the tragedy of Simon, my girlfriend Maya breaks up with me as she felt that being in a relationship was greatly affecting her work studies. I couldn't understand why my world began to suddenly crash on me. After long nights of heavy drinking, my parents became concerned with me and recommended that I see a virtual psychologist. Trying to cope with the loss of my friend and the end of my three-year relationship with my ex-girlfriend was quite the bitter pill to swallow. As the summer was nearing the end, I decided to head to the amusement park once again in hopes that the fair games or carnival rides would help provide some sort of temporary closure. I then saw an attractive girl standing by the cotton candy stand. I figured I'd shoot my shot, so I approached her and said, Hey, do you like roller coasters? Uh, yeah. Why you ask? Because I can send you on a ride that you'll never forget. <laughs> nice pickup line. Can I have your number? Uh, sure, I guess. I then reached into my pocket, only to see that I had forgotten my phone at home. I awkwardly grab a $1 bill from my wallet and embarrassedly ask the girl to write her number on it. The girl then takes the bill and begins writing her name and number, using some red lipstick she had gotten from her purse as I held onto her cotton candy. She then hands back the bill and says, Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too, uh, Samantha. I began to walk further down the amusement park and could see the same psychic clown machine from a distance. A trickle of sweat began running down the side of my face as I then realized that the machine might have had something to do with the death of my friend or the end of my relationship. I then approached the machine and immediately placed a $1 bill in the slot while asking the question, are you the reason my girlfriend broke up with me? The clown then begins to laugh and do its unsettling movement and then says the word, yes. After inserting another dollar in the bill slot, I asked, are you the reason my friend got stabbed? The clown then responds with, yes. I then began to start seeing red as a security guard approached me from behind saying, kid, the park is closing now. Can you please proceed to the exit? Uh, sure. 
No problem. As the security guard began hassling other people at the park, I used the opportunity to jump over the counter of one of the vendor booths that was currently closed, and waited for at least two hours straight before the coast was clear. I then jumped out of the booth and went towards the direction of where the psychic clown was at, only to see the entire machine relocated on the opposite side from where it initially was. I began to start banging my fists against the glass while yelling, I know you're alive! You were right beside the freaking hot dog stand! You wouldn't think I'd notice? I knew damn well you were the reason my friend is dead and why my girl and I are separated! I unwittingly went into my pocket and grabbed the bill that had the written phone number from the girl that I had just met. I slipped it into the machine, only to have the bill eject into two pieces. I yelled from the top of my lungs, ANSWER ME! ANSWER ME! as the clown suddenly began to laugh, despite not accepting the money I had put into it. The clown then vigorously starts banging its head on the glass, as if it was suffering from some sort of faulty error or malfunction. I'm done playing games with you. <laughs> I then went to go unplug the machine from the electricity outlet, only to see it had already been unplugged. The game is cursed. I've seen too many stupid kids like you lose your lives. Psychic Clown, do I have a girlfriend? No. Psychic Clown, is the color of Simon's shirt red? Yes. You'll lose everything. You hear me? I never allow my kid to go near a claw machine, and I know what you're thinking. Why not? Trust me when I say that claw machines remind me of a vicious childhood memory that still keeps me awake at night. I grew up in the outskirts and was raised by my mother. She told me my dad left her right before I was born, and since then he never tried to contact us. As a kid, I used to feel bad whenever I saw other kids going home with their dads after school. Luckily, I had the most loving mother who really did her part to play both roles. She took me out almost every weekend. One Saturday afternoon, I was playing in the backyard when my mom called me. She told me to get ready as we're about to head out. Without wasting time, I got dressed. We hopped into our car and she started the engine. The fresh air touched my face as I rolled down the passenger seat window. Where are we going, Mom? To a fair at Spring Lake. I got excited to hear this. The entire ride, I kept talking about the fun things I was going to do once we got there. When we arrived to Spring Lake, it was almost evening. The fairground glowed in the dark like a wonderland. Kids were running in joy. Small crowds were seen near almost every food stall. My mom took me to an ice cream truck and we bought our favorite chocolate ice cream. She was checking out some kitchen tools and I was standing beside her. Suddenly, my eyes went to the corner behind the ferris wheel and I saw a claw machine. Mom, can I play some games? Sure, but don't go too far. I'll be here so come back when you're done. My mom gave me some coins and I ran towards the claw machine. The screams of people on the ferris wheel mixed with the loud music of the fair created a chaotic atmosphere. The claw machine was the only spot that stood out like a lone wolf in that entire fair. As I got to it, I found out why. The machine was not in good condition, and the toys inside looked quite old and dirty. No one wants a worn out toy, so maybe that's why no kids came to play here. But among those not so good looking toys, a baseball caught my eye. I decided to aim for that. I inserted the first coin and the claw started to move towards it. I somehow grabbed the baseball. It was just two to three inches away from being mine when I dropped it. I got disappointed, but I had enough coins to give it another try. I took five attempts and failed each one hopelessly. When I realized I had finished all my coins in one single game, I kicked the machine out of anger. Damn it! 
There's no way Mom will give me more coins to keep trying. Seems like you suck at this. <laughs> I turned around and saw a pair of eyes peeking out from a dark corner. I was about to freak out when an average height man emerged from the darkness. There was nothing striking about his features, but his eyes made him look mysterious. Who are you? Just a guy, but we can be friends. He kept smiling at me from ear to ear after saying this. Why do you want to be my friend? Because I can give you what you want if you agree to help me in return. <laughs> um, what do you mean? I can get that baseball for you. Yeah, right. I knew there's no way he could get the ball because I'm really good at the claw machine and still failed five freaking times. He blinked at me, giving the same creepy smile and approached the machine. He inserted a coin and the claw started to move again. Without any difficulty, the man pulled out the baseball from the machine and gave it to me. As I said, you suck at this. <laughs> I felt humiliated and stood there with a sad face. The man then crouched down to my level and came extremely close. Now it's your turn. Are you ready, Matthew? Um, what do I have to do? Nothing. Just play another claw machine for me. Wait, there's another claw machine at this fair? Yes, but not many people know about it. It has even bigger and newer toys than this one. Want to check it out? I looked back and saw people everywhere. I couldn't see my mom, though. What are you thinking? Don't you want big toys? I thought what harm can come from playing in a claw machine. Also, I wanted to prove to this man that I don't suck at this game. Okay, let's go. The man smiled and started to walk to the other side of the fair. I followed him. I kept turning back and saw the bright lights moving away from me. After walking for a bit, the man stopped. I saw a spooky looking house standing in front of me. I've been to haunted houses at many other fairs before, but this one looked different. A huge clown face was put up at the entrance, and the door was inside its mouth. The man opened the door for me and said, Come on in. I walked inside and he closed the door behind me. At that moment, I felt that there was something wrong. He walked through the long corridor decorated with all kinds of scary props. The illuminating red and purple light made me feel like I've stepped into another world. My heart was beating faster, but still, I was no easy scare. I followed him and he took me to a big room, probably the main room inside the haunted house. There was something in the middle of the room covered with a damp cloth. I was wondering what it could be, just when I heard a muffled voice. What was that? Oh, Matthew, don't be afraid. There's no ghosts in here. All this time I didn't notice, but suddenly something sprung in my mind. How did he know my name? I never told him my name. How do you know my name? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and see what's under that cloth? I knew this man wouldn't let me out if I don't do as he says. I slowly walked towards the center of the room and grabbed the cloth with my trembling hand. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears. I removed the cloth in one go, and a filthy sight took place. It was indeed a claw machine, but instead of toys, it was completely filled with disgusting rats. They were trying hard to climb up the glass surface but each one kept sliding down. I, I, I want to go to my mom. Please let me go. You can take your baseball, I don't want it. Don't be scared of me. Why do you want to go back when your mom is already here? What? The man rushed to the corner of the room and pulled out a chair from nowhere. My mom was sitting on it, tied with rope. Her mouth was duct taped and I discovered the source of the muffled sound that I heard a few moments earlier. She started sobbing terribly after seeing me. 
Fear was flooding in her tearful eyes. Please, let us go. I will. But first, you have to successfully get the key out of the claw machine. You get the key, I'll let you all leave. But every time you fail, I will cut something off of your mom. <laughs> and that's how the nightmare began. I had no choice but to follow his exact words. I made my first attempt and I failed out of nervousness and fear. The man took out a knife and chopped off the thumb on my mom's right hand. Second chance. <laughs> I failed the second time as well, and the psycho chopped off two more fingers. Watching your mother suffer because of your failures is the cruelest thing life has ever done to me. She cried more in pain than in fear, and I had no idea why the man was doing this to us. Please, enough now! Let us go! Stop hurting her! Why are you doing this? Trust me, Matthew. I have my own reasons. I am. But before he could finish, I heard cop cars coming in our direction. Who called the cops? He looked at my mom with a death stare, and her cell phone fell on the ground from her tied hands. I don't know what happened next, but the man turned off the lights all of a sudden, and it got pitch dark. I heard my mom's muffled cry one last time, and everything went silent. I was so traumatized that I couldn't stand anymore, and I fainted on the ground. The cops came and rescued me, but they didn't find the man or my mother. I became a ward of the state and spent the rest of my childhood in foster homes. I still don't know where my mom is or who the man was, but I know he'll visit me again. Why? Because when I woke up in the hospital after that night, I found a piece of paper inside of my pocket. It read, the game hasn't finished yet. I don't know how he left this message, but I'm sure he is out there watching my every move, looking for one chance to finish what he started that day. <laughs> 